Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, I wanted to share some thoughts on why I think it's important and valuable to hire a guitar teacher or really any teacher for anything you're trying to improve on. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today is actually based on some experience I've had with coaches and teachers in other areas and disciplines, but uh, mostly it revolves around hiring a guitar teacher. Now please hang out till the end of the video actually because I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, some cool new videos that I'm going to be posting next week. So some background. <clears throat> I stopped taking lessons when I was 15 or 16 basically because um, I thought I could do it on my own. I, I could craft my own practice schedules based on YouTube videos and magazine articles and instructional books and it just didn't work. And the reason is there's just too much information out there and it was overwhelming to me to pick specific things to work on and be consistent with them. So basically, every time I'd sit down to practice, I'd completely change what I was working on, and the problem with doing that too often is that you're not working on something enough to actually get better at it. So I was, for like four years, uh, until I was around 20, I made like no progress on the instrument, and it was so frustrating. And then finally, I hired a teacher. Around three years ago, I started taking lessons with this guy, Theodore Zeras. Um, you guys might have seen him on YouTube. He's uh, kind of a YouTube uh, instructor and uh, teaches via Skype. He's located in Greece. Really awesome teacher. Um, and that ended up being the best, like, indiv singular investment I've ever made in my playing. And I'm going to tell you why. I'll start with the most obvious. Obviously, a teacher should know more than you. He should not only t teach you um, how to get better at the things you want to get better at, but it should sort of teach you things you didn't know existed, sort of broaden your horizons, um, broaden your perspective on the instrument. So it's not only teaching you what you know you don't know, but teaching you what you didn't know that you didn't know. And also, secondly, a teacher should be able to assess your playing and see where you're fucking up. I mean, that's pretty obvious. The third one is not so obvious. Um, a teacher will be able to craft your lesson and practice plans for you. This was a big deal for me because, like I was saying, I was constantly changing my mind about what I was going to work on, and it ended up being really kind of stressful because I'd sit down to practice and I'd say, shit, I can't decide what to prioritize because this guy's shredding this and this guy's doing this economy thing and they're sweeping and I gotta do songwriting and it was just great to have someone write my practice plan basically for me. You're sort of delegating that mental thought to someone else, someone who knows more than you because they're a professional teacher. He or she is a professional teacher. Now this keeps you consistent because not only are you going to be practicing the same thing you know, day to day until your next lesson, but usually a good teacher will have some sort of progression from um, one technique or one topic to another. So long term, you're going to be consistent in making progress, and that's fucking awesome. And then secondly, as I mentioned, it really eliminates what's called cognitive fatigue because you're not having to think about what to work on. Someone else is thinking for you, and you basically just show up, look at the thing, and look at the, the assignment, and do it. You don't have to think about anything. Unfortunately, the bad thing about the internet is that there is a lot of stuff on there, and it can be really overwhelming. It's really difficult to pick. It was really difficult for me, at least. I mean, maybe some people are better at this, but it was really difficult for me to pick just an hour or two's worth of practice material. And uh, lastly, hiring a teacher will make you accountable especially if you're paying somebody. I mean, that's putting money down makes you get shit done. For one thing, because you have a deadline, because you have that, um, that next lesson that you need to prepare for, but also because it'll f having, having some accountability and um, stakes will force you to work on things that are really difficult. Um, again, maybe it's just me, but I noticed that if I had to work on something that was really challenging, sometimes I wouldn't actually like sit in the tension of being shitty at it. And knowing that I have to play it for someone, an audience, you know, my, my teacher during the next lesson makes you stick with that tension, with that pain, so to speak, and work on it really slow and get better at it. And then the other side of it is that your teacher's going to know how to tell you, uh, going to know how to approach the, the thing. So even if it's really hard and challenging, you're going to have someone to tell you, okay, here's how you make it less challenging so you can improve on it. One of the things I noticed people um, mention with hiring a teacher is cost. And I encourage you to look at um, hiring a teacher not as a, an expense, but as an investment. Um, you're basically paying, putting money down to make sure you get better at the instrument. Even if it's not, even if that person's not the best teacher, 
usually covering just a few of the, the things I mentioned earlier, like having someone to write your practice plan for you or having someone to introduce you to new topics. Usually any one of those things is going to be really effective and helpful. So um, it's not the, you're going to get rewards back um, from the money you're putting down. And it's usually not that expensive, especially if you go with somebody via Skype. Musicians, musicians in general seem broke, so they don't charge that much. It's not like hiring a business consultant. It's going to be 150 an hour. Um, and uh, if you're concerned, if you're really strapped for cash, maybe do a lesson one every once every two weeks. That way you're kind of splitting your cost in half. Now that I've sufficiently convinced you to hire somebody, let's talk about how to do it. Number one, look for somebody who has the techniques, the skills, and knowledge that you want to have in the instrument or, or whatever. Um, when I uh, decided I needed to hire a teacher again, my biggest, the biggest thing I wanted to improve on was my speed picking. Obviously, it's a pretty big deal in extreme metal. Um, but I really fucking sucked at speed picking back then. I'm much better now, at least I think so, I hope so. Um, so what I did is I went and f looked for teachers who could pick really fast. You know, obviously I wanted a teacher, um, and we'll get to that in the next suggestion, but I looked for somebody who could pick really, really fast, and I found somebody. If you're, uh, if it's a little bit earlier in your guitar playing career, almost any teacher will be able to help you with anything. A lot of, t a lot of good teachers for beginners will approach the instrument more broadly, and so even, for example, if you're like just starting but you wanna play extreme music, uh, most teachers understand basic speed picking exercises and things like that. So in that case, um, you don't need to worry so much about having like a guy who specializes in whatever music you love. Um, but obviously, if you're into metal and the guy only teaches jazz or something, maybe not a good not a good fit. But do not hire a teacher because he or she is a fucking rock star. I've done this. It is a fucking mistake. And the reason is that a lot of these guys just teach to make money in between touring and things like that. And it doesn't, that's not a bad thing, but the problem is a lot of them are not good teachers. Um, you really want someone who is a professional teacher and knows pedagogically how to approach the instrument, approach the topics and techniques that you guys are working on, and knows how to teach that to you. You want someone who can teach effectively. Unfortunately, a lot of these uh, rock stars who teach on the side are not um, good teachers. What you might find is someone who is a teacher and happens to be in a band. I mean, there are definitely some guys who are like that. And in that case, it's probably cool. Number two, do, does your teacher have a syllabus or some sort of practice plan and materials? The easiest way to tell this is during your first lesson, if you, say, or if you show up and the teacher says something to the effect of, so uh, yeah, what do you want to work on? Don't waste another second or cent on that dude. Um, I've seen this happen and it just doesn't get better. Your teacher needs to have some sort of some leadership is probably the best way to describe it with, um, with how, the lesson, how the lessons are going to progress. <sighs> Number three is location. Uh, you really just want someone who's convenient so that you're not like dreading sitting in traffic to go to lesson and you're not gonna skip the lesson or cancel. Um, uh, I take lessons via Skype and I found that works really well for me. I think that would work for most people, especially especially if you're not a total beginner. Maybe if you're just getting started on the instrument, you want someone who can teach, teach you how to like where to put your hands and shit. But other than that, um, I think Skype is a great option and it's cheaper for everybody involved and obviously it's much more convenient than driving anywhere. And in general, if you're not sure about a particular teacher, you can always start with somebody, try him out, and um, if you don't like it, try another teacher or try multiple teachers at the same time and then just and lessons with the one that you don't like. Uh, you don't have to, you know, tell that teacher that. You can basically say, um, I'm going out of town. You know, we gotta hold lessons for a while and then just don't resume them. All right, that's all I had to say on uh, this topic today. Um, but I have one cool thing to share with you. Earlier this summer, I found myself traveling uh, to Athens, Greece. And as I mentioned, I take lessons with a guy named Theodore Zeros, and he's located in Athens. So while this isn't the reason I went to Athens, um, it ended up being a really cool thing, you know, to go and meet somebody that I had worked with for like two or three years and never met in person. And he was a really cool guy, and he, uh, you know, made me and my friend, my friend and me dinner, 
and let us stay at his place actually when our hotel ended up being a complete shithole. Um, and he was kind enough to do a full like one hour interview with me talking about how to hire a teacher, how to approach practicing, um, how to be a teacher if you want to be one yourself. All kinds of good stuff. So next week I'm going to start posting that and um, post first some clips so that people can kind of see what's going on in the interview and then I'll post the full thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, other than that, I think that's all I had to say today. I hope this was helpful and uh, at least entertaining for everybody. Uh, all the social media stuff is in the description below. If you could check that out, that'd be really awesome. We also just did a really cool new drum playthrough video, which I might put a link somewhere here, but I'll definitely link it in the description. Uh, it's with our new drummer, Dylan, and he shreds through Kill the Boy. We had it professionally mixed, it sounds and looks really cool. Uh, check that out, I'll link it. Other than that, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Bye.